Scotty, Jay Pace here from Providence Property Group. Today, giving you a bit of an update on the property market, the trends and performance. So let's jump right in. So national home values rose 18.4% in the year to August, which is the highest rate of annual appreciation since 1989. Uh, this means that property owners experienced the fastest growth to their personal wealth in more than a decade, with rocketing house prices adding one trillion trillion one trillion dollars to household balance sheets over the first half of the year. In the first six months of the year, property prices increased by one trillion dollars. I just want you to wrap your head around that quickly. There's no question about it. Australian. Um, our wealth is underpinned by residential real estate. And right here you can see $8.9 trillion is what residential real estate's currently worth. It absolutely dwarfs the Australian superannuation scheme, uh, the $2.9 trillion in Australian listed stock, uh, the $985 billion in commercial real estate. I also think an important thing too here is we start hearing a lot of people going, oh, but what about all the debt? What about all the debt? Well, our current debt, as you can see here, an outstanding, outstanding mortgage debt is $2 trillion versus the $8.9 trillion worth of real estate. So I think we're okay there. Now, the latest figures, I'll just move my little head out of the way. The latest figures show that um, the Australian Bureau of Statistics have revealed that the total household wealth in Australia has increased by 5.8%. So that's $735 billion in the June quarter for 2021. Now, the highest median dwelling value in Sydney is currently $1,056,093. Now, median dwelling value means houses, townhouses, units combined. So detached, semi-detached, all of those lobbed in together. So some people might look at that number for Sydney and go, that sounds really cheap. There's suburbs where properties are worth tens of millions versus suburbs that are worth hundreds of thousands. Okay, so I think that's quite important. Um, it's followed by Canberra. So Canberra's in there at $838,904 and then Melbourne at $775,142. So that's, I'm not gonna go through every single one of them. What I will say is that if you are looking to purchase a property, wherever it is, make sure you look at that median value to get an understanding as to what you're possibly buying. We see people come to us with unrealistic price points way too often, and then that time actually costs them a lot more money because they can't find something that meets that criteria with the budget that they're looking at. So have a good think before you jump in. Now, houses rose more than double the pace of unit growth over the past 12 months. Uh, we can see here uh, that you've got total return for houses at 32.2% versus the total return for units at 15.3%. So, you know, more than double there. Uh, as the demand for detached housing definitely pushes prices to new highs, you can see what it's also doing is bringing the rental yields to new, new lows. So at just price here in Sydney, you're getting a 2.2% rental yield. If your interest component's 2%, well, straight away, you're in a little bit of a negative geared position where you've also got to think about rental management fees, insurance costs, maintenance, etc. So it's no wonder why we're actually starting to see some of the money from places like Melbourne and Sydney start to move west to places like Perth. A um, bit more on that in a moment. Uh, but I think it's really important here that uh, we start to see that the disparity between town houses and um, units has never been so high. Um, the price gap between them is at record highs with freestanding homes in some neighborhoods costing quadruple the median apartment price. And houses now cost 74% more than apartments, which is up 55, from 55% more last year. Um, just uh, crazy numbers here. I mean, if we're looking in Sydney, for an example, in the inner west, $2 million for the median house price um, versus seven sixty dollars for the median unit price. That's a $1.24 million difference there. Uh, places like Blacktown, $820,000 for a house versus $559,990 for a unit. That's two, that's a quarter of a million dollars difference. Um, places like Parramatta, $1 million for a house versus $584,500, which is a $415,500 difference. Uh, these are significant differences here. You can see the gap here on the chart. It's never been this far apart, people. So we definitely do think that these are indicators that you're gonna see people give up on buying a house because they realize they can't afford it or that the income they're gonna get from it's not gonna help them with that uh, serviceability of that loan. So we're gonna start seeing more and more people go, you know what, I'm gonna take location over size, I'm gonna buy something closer to where I wanna be and I'm probably gonna get a better rental yield holding it if it's an investment. Uh, 
Population. Now listen, population is the main catalyst that affects supply and demand, and, uh, and obviously that affects price, pr price points and growth. So let's have a look at some numbers here. Most states and territories had positive population growth over the year ending the 31st of March 2021. Uh, Queensland had the highest growth rate at 0.9%. Victoria had the only negative growth rate at minus 0.6%. And uh, natural increase was the major contributor to population changes in the majority of our capital cities and states. Um, net interstate migration was definitely the major contributor to population change in Queensland. So the, you can see that number there. It's, it's, a, it's a, an outstanding number, 30,785 um, people moving into state, jumping around and moving to Queensland. And that would most specifically be uh, based upon the highest population centres, which is probably Brisbane, the capital city there. Uh, you can see that Sydney was down, um, Melbourne was down. And, uh, you know, that number there at uh, minus 53,484, ouch, for uh, Melbourne for their international migration. I mean, this is one of the reasons why Melbourne will be the largest capital city in Australia by mid-century, because they have the largest amount of international population growth. But COVID's put a very big hold on that for a temporary period. It will definitely come back, but that's definitely a big blow to their economy there. And uh, this is why, as I said, again, we're starting to see more data showing us people moving into other states. And the two winners here, like I was talking about in the last slide, are definitely Queensland and Western Australia. However, that's a pretty big gap between the two, 10 times difference to be, in fa to be exact. Um, let's keep looking here. Now, total stock levels. So stock advertised at the moment is about 30% below the five year average nationally. And with listing volumes at their lowest level in at least five years, Australian homes are averaging just 31 days on the market to sell. Now that's down from 47 days in the same period for 2020. And this is one of the main reasons why we're seeing suboptimal properties selling at premium prices. And this is why people are scratching their heads and not understanding this. But you know, for every 10 people that are looking to buy a property, there's seven or less for those people. So it's not very attractive at the moment. And this is why there's a lot of frustration. Now, if we look at housing turnover, um, now it, it, it's at its highest levels since 2004. CoreLogic estimates that there were almost 598,000 houses and units sold across Australia over the year ending August, 2021. Now, the highest number of annual sales, that is the highest number of annual sales since 2004 and a 42% lift on the annual number of sales over the, the, the past 12 month period. Um, so nationally, the number of dwellings sold over the past year was actually 31% above the decade average and 24% higher than the 20 year average. So what does that mean in English? We'll just look right here at this chart. You can see that the current level where we're at right now at 597,838. And in the middle there, you've got the 20 year average at 481,193. We've smashed past that. And the 10 year average, we've smashed past that. So um, turnover is happening fast and property is staying on the market for a shorter period of time. One of the other things that we get asked a lot of questions about is interest rates. You know, where are interest rates going, Jay? You know, what should we be doing at the moment? We're not brokers, but certainly what we can tell you is that. Uh, in September, the press release from Governor Philip Lowe indicated that uh, from the RBA that they would not consider raising interest rates until 2024. So they've held rates at 0.1% throughout September. Now, is this a good time to buy property? That's probably the most prevalent question we're getting asked at the moment. We've done plenty of videos on this on our YouTube page, so please jump onto that when you're free and watch some of the, the cycle timing videos that our director and head of research, Simon Harris, has done. But real quickly, this is a faster and more simplistic look at the 18 to 20 year property cycle, in our opinion. We've got two expansionary phases, two recessionary phases, the first upswing and the return to growth, typically seven years in length. Um, we've all just lived through that stage from around 2011 to around 2019. Uh, the growth that we saw since the GFC, uh, the, the two growth phases are separated by usually a mid-cycle slowdown. That's a 12 to 18 month period. We predicted this mid-cycle slowdown um, for 2019 and 2020 in around 2017. And uh, that's when we saw that cycle slowdown in 2019, 2020. Uh, it's the same as we experienced in 2000 to 2001. And we've come out of this very strongly this year. 
Um, the message here is this, you know, we've moved from a period of stagnation back into a time of strong growth and opportunity. Don't be one of those people that keeps saying, I'm gonna wait for the market to pull back. I'm gonna wait for the market to pull back. I'm gonna wait for the market to pull back. They're the same people that have been saying that during the previous three cycles that we've seen. Um, they're just never gonna buy property. It's not gonna work. So the sooner they figure that out, the more happy they're gonna be. Providence has been helping Aussies uh, buy homes and investment properties for nearly two decades now. So it's something we, we do quite well. Uh, you know, let one of our professional buyers agents help you locate, assess and negotiate a property. If you have any questions, contact us. Great speaking with you. Have a fantastic day.